The Lion King's Scar was one of the most ruthless Disney characters we've ever seen. With his wicked plans, he took the throne by force. We think you all know exactly what scene we're talking about. That heartbreaking one that ruined your childhood? Scar caused pain, hunger, and suffering to all his subjects during his rule. He was backed by dangerous clans of hyenas. All the happiness was driven from the land, and Pride Rock was left in utter darkness and despair. But not all the lions accepted Scar as their ruler. Nala refused to listen to him, and she didn't want to be part of his pride. But how did she manage to say no to Scar when he asked her to become his queen? How did she come out alive and retrieve our hero Simba? Stick around as we tell you about every shocking detail of Nala's life during Scar's reign and what he did to her. Not surprisingly, the scene between Nala and Scar was cut from The Lion King because it was too intense for a family audience. But don't worry, I'm here to tell you all about it. Before we go any further, it is important to establish our theory about Nala. One of the biggest takeaways that we've learned from Nala's survival is that she didn't give up even though Simba abandoned her and she was left alone and starving. Nala is the true hero of the Lion King because she restored the natural ecosystem and the circle of life. It is her fighting spirit and commitment to the cause that saved the kingdom of the lions, not Simba. You heard that right. In this theory, we're going to focus on Nala's role as the true hero of the story because Simba gave up on the kingdom of lions and on the circle of life, and she didn't. Simba initially lost his will to live and to fight for good when Scar murdered his father, but Nala fought to the end and won. Let's look at Nala's early life and what made her the strong lioness we know today. Nala was a happy cub. Her mother, Serafina, loved her and gave her all the attention and affection she could. Nala also enjoyed hanging out with her best friend Simba, who was also betrothed to her from birth thanks to their parents. The two cubs weren't pleased about that. They just wanted to be friends. As a cub, Nala was stronger than Simba and often overpowered him by pouncing on him and pinning him down. From the very beginning, you can see that the lioness Nala was more powerful than the lion Simba. These curious cubs got themselves into trouble, sneaking into the elephant graveyard without their parents' permission. They were attacked by hyenas, and Nala narrowly escaped getting eaten by Shenzi and was saved by Simba's quick thinking. Understandably, Mufasa was furious that Simba took Nala to the graveyard after he forbade him to go there. Nala had a lot of respect for Mufasa, not only because he saved her and Simba, but because he was a great leader. His strength and bravery inspired her. But life was about to change, and for the worse. Scar returned to the Pride without Mufasa and Simba, blaming the tragic wildebeest stampede. He told the lions that both Mufasa and Simba had perished. Worse still, Scar blamed Simba for Mufasa's demise. The Pride was shocked. Nala was devastated because her friend had disappeared. She and her pride were left with a new, vicious ruler that changed the entire natural and social order. The pride lands used to be lush and green. Predators and prey intermingled to create a perfect natural balance that they called the circle of life. But the pride lands became a wasteland with little or no food to eat because the hyenas overhunted and drained the energy and life out of the ecosystem. So let's look at what life was like for Nala under Scar's reign. How did Nala manage to survive? Nala hated Scar. The Pride Lands were no longer her home. The natural balance and the circle of life had been disrupted. Everything living had turned into a wasteland. So you might be wondering why Nala didn't leave right away. The answer is complicated. She was only a cub when Scar came to power. She could never have survived on her own. She needed her mom and Pride to protect her. That's why she waited until she was old enough to fend for herself. In a deleted scene of The Lion King, Scar sat in his cave talking to Zazu about the missing pieces of his life. He had the one thing he always wanted, to be king of the Pride Lands, but it wasn't enough. It was still not enough. He had become more and more evil and less and less satisfied. He didn't have the respect and love of the other lions like Mufasa once did. Scar was a typical narcissist who couldn't see his own faults. He told Zazu how amazing, handsome, and clever he was. But Zazu reminded him that the hyenas were roaming all over the Pride Lands and devouring everyone's food. That's why the lions didn't like Scar. Scar ignored Zazu's complaints and told him to be quiet. Zazu then reminded him that he didn't have a loving family. 
Scar realized that he didn't have a queen or offspring like a Lion King should. So the idea of having little scars appealed to him. He believed that his lineage would grant him immortality. Zazu has to be blamed for putting this idea into Scar's head. Why did Zazu have to mention the lionesses? That's because of Zazu's character. Zazu doesn't filter. He blurts out whatever thoughts materialize in his mind. It wasn't a personal attack on Nala. Zazu was nervous because he had to serve Scar. So why didn't Zazu escape rather than sell the natural kingdom out? Let's leave that one for another day. In this scene, Scar notices Nala. He dismissed Zazu so that he could talk to Nala alone. Scar broke out in a creepy song called The Madness of King Scar. Zazu tried to protect Nala, but there wasn't much he could do. She visited Scar to ask him for permission for the lions to search for food elsewhere. Because he was a narcissist, Scar disagreed. He then complimented her for becoming a lioness. She thought he was joking and she didn't take the situation as seriously as she should have. She tried asking him again about getting more food for the lions, but Scar deliberately ignored her question and impertinently rubbed his tail in her face. He stopped respecting personal boundaries. He went on and on about how important he was. Then he talked about having little scars with her. She yelled at him to get away from her. She even used Simba's signature move and scratched him in the face. Oblivious to her uneasiness, Scar didn't get offended. On the contrary, he interpreted her rejection as an invitation. He said that he always gets what he wants one way or another. He prided himself on his unreasonableness. Scar even announced to the pride that he was choosing Nala as his queen. Heroically, she stood up to his tyranny and rejected his proposal loud and clear in front of everyone. He then told her that if she didn't become his queen, he would send her into exile. Once again, Nala stood up to him and told him that he couldn't banish her, but he instructed the lions to get rid of her. Nala refused to listen and didn't want to leave the pride. It is a serious thing for a lion to leave the pride. Lions stick together to survive. Lions hunt together, and it is much harder for a lion to do this on their own. Scar reminded her that he was king, and that what he said was law. The other lionesses didn't like the way he was talking to Nala, so they cornered him, but Scar no longer cares if they respect him or not. He only cared about them obeying him. He then introduced the lions to his co-conspirators, the hyenas. Scar and his hyenas told the lions that if any of them stepped out of line, they would be eaten. Nala had little choice, but she chose to be exiled rather than to be married to Scar. Better to leave than be scarred for life. Now let's take a look at Nala's life after she left Pride Rock. There aren't any scenes in The Lion King that show her leaving, but after the scene we've just discussed, we can assume that her life wasn't easy. She had to hunt on her own in the barren lands, and Nala had to leave her mother and Simba's mother, Sarabi, behind. Left on her own and starving, Nala has been traveling through the wasteland for months looking for food to eat. There was nothing. Finally, she discovered and chased a delicious looking warthog, Pumbaa. This was where she finally reunited with Simba. Nala? Simba? Is that really you? Yeah, it's me Simba. <laughs> <laughs> her fortune and her future changed from that moment on. She was ecstatic to find out that her friend was alive. However, Simba told her that he didn't want to be king and reclaim his birthright, and this disappointed her. But even then, she didn't give up. She made him see the truth and that he was the rightful heir. To add to this memorable scene, they fell in love, and this set their parents' plan in motion. Together with Timon and Pumbaa, the four of them set out to save Pride Rock. When they returned to the Pride Lands, the truth was finally revealed to everyone that Scar was responsible for Mufasa's fall. Because of Nala and Simba's courage, they retaliated and challenged Scar and the hyenas. Nala fought bravely and refused to back down even for a second. In the end, Scar was overthrown and Simba took the throne alongside Nala as his queen. She chose Simba out of her own free will. She wasn't forced into marriage. Simba succeeded whereas Scar failed because she loved Simba. As with any Disney happy ending, they raised cubs together and restored the circle of life. Nala became the queen mother of the next generation of lions. So to bring things to a close, Nala could in fact be the true hero of the Lion King. But not everybody acknowledges Nala's bravery and the big part she played in the story in saving her ancestral homeland and in repairing the circle of life. Do you think Nala's love and bravery restored the circle of life to the kingdom, or was it Simba all along? Let us know what you think in the comments below. 
See you in the next one. Live. That's a great idea.